Uh, we are joined now by Mark Morial. He's the president and CEO of the National Urban League. He's also a former mayor of New Orleans. Good morning, Steve. Uh, morning great, to you. Great, great. So, uh, jump in in the middle of the hey, conversation. Look, I don't know how much you've heard. Yeah, this, there's a bigger question here, and the question is the Fourth Amendment and the right to privacy and the balance against security and uh, the way in which the Fourth Amendment has been eroded. Now, everybody wants to remain safe. Uh, and that shouldn't really be the debate. It is the breadth and the scope of this that really caught caught my attention. And uh, and I think the disclosures thus far may not reveal the breadth of what the NSA is doing. And it's an important public debate. It's an important public disclosure because new technology uh, gives the NSA these awesome powers, the ability to really track uh, every American citizen. So this is a big discussion, it's a big debate, and it's about public policy, it's about the Constitution, it's about the right to privacy, uh, and I think it's beyond uh, simple partisanship. It, well, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. It's interesting we, we say bipartisanship is dead, we live in such a polarized time, how bipartisanship really was the story this week of the, of the reaction in Washington. But you, you were saying there, there is this aspect of, of safety about whether this stuff keeps us safe. And I think that is part of this debate, because every time, or often I think, when sort of civil liberties questions get polled, the public's reaction you know, pretty overwhelmingly is to err on the side of safety. And there was, like the New York Times this week went and they did some sort of you know, man-on-the-street interviews. They interviewed a student at, uh, at Harvard and they, and they asked her about, you know, all the revelations, all the NSA revelations this week. And she said, on one hand, I think it's extremely invasive, but am I surprised? Do I think it's right? No. Do I think it's necessary? That's where I'm undecided. And, and Liza, I, I kind of keep coming back to that because there was I, there was a little pushback it seemed from the government this week, where they where the story was sort of put out there that the the, the sort of um, prospective New York City subway bomber a few years ago may have been caught through in part through this Prism program through sort of the, the monitoring of foreign you know email account activity. There was a I guess an Al Qaeda uh, linked email account that uh, maybe was able to be monitored through Prism. I know there's some dispute about all the specifics here, but that's an example I think when you, when you talk to, to members the public, they think of that maybe first uh, when these questions are raised. Hey, the New York City subways weren't blown up because of something like this. Sure, and, and if in fact there was a link to a member of Al-Qaeda or a suspected member of Al-Qaeda, uh, that should be able to be tracked and the law allows for that to be able to, track, to be tracked. The key is that there needs to be some link to a suspected terrorist or a suspected terrorist plot or suspected criminal activity. Where the line is when we start doing this dragnet surveillance uh, at, as under the telephone records program or under the prism program it appears that even though the target is supposed to be foreign intelligence uh, the program is tolerating a massive amount of what they call incidental collection. I, I guess I guess that's that's the key point to me because I, I I remember we, we kind of went through this in, in the torture debate. It reminds me a little bit of where you know it's it's it, not only is torture morally wrong the case would be, but torture also doesn't actually get you any any material, any information, valuable information you wouldn't otherwise have. Is that is that the case here? Are you confident, you know, or Mark well, you know, realizes that, that we wouldn't be getting anything we aren't getting from this program? Question is whether ongoing monitoring of every United States citizens' telephone accounts, who they call, uh, when they make the call, how long the call is, is in fact an effective tool. And the reason why we can't evaluate that is because of the cone of silence, the, the secrecy that surrounds the actions of the NSA, the, secrets, uh, the secrecy with which the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court operates. And that's why it's important to have this debate, because we don't know. We have to go on faith. We have to say we trust what our public officials are saying, that these intrusions have been, in fact, um, and have in fact yielded some benefits and I think that is where we have to push back we have to push for greater public disclosure because FISA was a reform in the 1970s uh, to the abuses of the NSA with respect uh, to US citizens well, I want to I want to ask about secrecy and disclosure I want to ask that to former White House Secret Press Secretary Robert Gibbs who is going to join us after this